And so like this one, I, I start out by asking people, what devices do they use when they travel? They've got laptops, they've got phones, they've got tablets, they've got cameras. And of course they have to keep them all powered while they're traveling. Right. And so I, I do a whole demonstration. If you're traveling outside the U S or in actually even inside the U S you need to power your device, you know, while you're going. So you need to have something like this. You can see I'm holding up a, a charging cable. You got to have a charging cable. Then you got to have something to plug the, the cable into, into the wall. When you go abroad, like to England or the continent, France, someplace like that, you need a different kind of a device to plug your phone into. Uh, I also show people that they can get batteries like this for um, charging their devices when they can't plug into a car or a wall or something like that. Let's say you're out on a hike or a walk and you no notice that your charge is getting low. Um, I show them things like this. If you have an, um, a Macintosh computer, a laptop, or even a, uh, like a, an iPad, you can get these little converters that you can use for plugging into the walls in different countries. I teach them about security, how they can use something called a VPN or virtual private network to, uh, to hide what they're browsing for from other people. Like if you're in a cafe somewhere and you're worried, you can somebody see your financial information, your passwords. I teach them about how to use a SIM card, which is a little thing for, um, when you're in a foreign country, you can change your phone number and get a, a foreign plan to make your phone like a foreign a phone and cost much less than getting a overseas travel plan. Of course, and I also teach people about how to charge things like their uh, cameras. And then I also tell them about other upcoming classes, what kind of classes I might be teaching, you know, what, what, what the kinds of things they can do. So there's lots of um, stuff you can learn in your classes like this, and that you they usually go about an hour and all the guides like me enjoy give and take. We like uh, people to ask questions of us. So we always leave plenty of time during our presentation to have questions because we're trying to teach a skill. And I, uh, my name is Russ. I largely teach uh, uh, travel skill to people, uh, things they might need information they might need to know while they're traveling or even how to make reservations or how to plan their travel. So uh -huh. if, if you're going, um, say like to Dominic Republic and you're going on a cruise, I've heard people say that, you know, it costs more to use your phone. So with something like that, you would buy uh, another SIM card? Well, that's a good question, Norma. Um, that though you've brought up a very good point when it comes to something like that you have to research what your options are and the cruise line actually you're taking a cruise on should tell you so for example i'm going to mexico at the end of the year and i am um uh i found out that i can take my phone with me and my current phone plan will just carry over into mexico with, with no extra charges so it used to be they charged you extra like $2 a day to use your phone in Mexico, which isn't a lot, right. but now it's free. So you raise a good question. I don't know what it might be like on a cruise. That, that is a good question. Okay. You, the, I'm assuming that the cruise line, the ship has a Wi-Fi, and you can use your device in a Wi-Fi environment. You turn off the cellular data on your phone mm -hmm. and then, and then there's no extra charge as long as you're in Wi-Fi, either in the ship or if you go on land somewhere and find a place where there's a Wi-Fi signal, you can use your phone outside of cellular and it works just fine. Oh, okay, okay. Um, now the ones that you do need to change over a SIM card, uh, where would you get the SIM card from? Because I have an iPhone too, so would I buy it from Apple? Or would I buy it? No, from no, no. State? You know what I tell? That's a very good question. What I tell people to do, uh, uh, Norma, is when you land in that country, go to a, a, a mobile phone shop right there. Actually, a lot of airports have them. Okay. And go in and, and, and buy one right there. I, I got one. I'll show you mine look like. I When I was in Italy two years ago, I got one. Comes in, it's got this, <laughs> the look comes out thing about the size of a credit card. And the, right. the, 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 the SIM cards, little... you know. Yeah, you punch it out. It's real tiny, the right. SIM card. And I had the guy, I bought that. 
and uh-huh. the plan f- for about $40. And okay. the guy, um, the guy put it in for me. He, he helped me set things on my phone and then, um, I could keep the SIM card. And if I had gone back to Italy within six months, I could have just put some extra, um, some extra, you know, I could have topped, topped up the card for maybe $15. Okay. So that's the way to so go. It's almost like one of those go and pay phones when you get that SIM card. That's right. That's right. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I never knew that. That's something good to know. And I didn't know that if you go to another country, you might need another device for the outlets because you were showing the device. Yeah. I'll show you. For example, if you go to England, uh, well, so the U S you know what our, ours look like is these little two prongs right. like that. That works right. everywhere in the Western Hemisphere, Canada, Mexico, everywhere in South America, this works. So you're fine okay. as long as you stay in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, if you go to England, you need one that has a big heavy duty three prong like this. Okay. And, um, and then if you go to the continent of Europe, you need one that has a two prong like this. They're a different shape. And um, you can do a couple different things. One is you can buy these you can, you can buy these before you go online. That's, that's a good thing to buy ahead of the time. Probably the cheapest way to do it. I have one like this that has three USB ports in it. So I could charge two phones at a time, like my, my phone and my wife's phone, or you can get one that has a single USB port in it. You can charge one phone. Um, or you can get one like this. This is a a little thing I call a lens scent and the Mm -hmm. lens scent has, um, four USB ports in it. And you can see it's got the, the prongs for the U.S. But if I go, say, to England, I snap that up and I put on a little adapter like this that works for England. And now okay. it works in England. And then if, I, if I'm on the same trip, I decide I'm going to go to France, cross the channel. I get the little adapter that slides on like this. So I, this one four port adapter does everything. It wow. also charges iPads. So the only thing it won't charge is a laptop. And okay. in the event that you do have a laptop, you, you do have to get something if you have like a, a PC. If you have a Macintosh laptop, you can buy a little uh, kit that will put that different country's adapter right onto your charging brick. So this is like a little charger brick for an iPad. And the one for my laptop is just a little bit bigger. And it'll give you these same kind of adapters you can slide in and out like that. So that's a handy thing to have. Yes, and see, I um, at one point was gonna invest in a a MacBook or you know something besides the tablet, but I don't use the computer a lot. I'm just getting back into using it. So maybe you know if I get really involved in the classes or something else, I might you know think about it. But um, I had a a Windows Surface. And I don't know what happened. I guess it might work, but it stopped working. And I had a, a Hewitt Packet um, laptop, and that wasn't doing much. So I took that to the shop, and it was like, it's going to cost too much to update it. So I know computers, they, they, they move fast as far as the length of time. They might be good for five years or whatever. So I just didn't want to put a lot of money back into nothing right now, unless I really decide to do something with it. But um, your charges that you were showing, I've never seen those before. How they go in the phone? Because you know nowadays they got stuff that you could not not. I'm sorry, the batteries, the batteries. Oh yeah, this this yeah. is really cool. This is a battery pack. Right. And um, you can buy these in all shapes and sizes. They're actually, the ones I see now very commonly look a lot like the size of just a phone. This is an old right. iPhone 6. They're about this size. Right. And they have, and this has, this will hold, you can, so what you do is you plug this into the wall. Um, there's a separate cord that go, you plug it in here and then you just plug it into the same, you know, USB port somewhere in the wall. Right. And it charges up the battery. And then the, my, this battery will hold like two and a half or almost three cell phone charges on it. 